Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to start my series breakdown video for the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. If you didn't know, right now me and a few of my friends, uh, Rachel, B, Samantha, Tiffany and I, we are putting together the Summer of Tessa Dare along. I decided to do a series breakdown video for the Spindle Cove series because I actually love the Spindle Cove series. I feel like it's very underhyped compared to Tessa Dare's other series. So I thought I would break down every book in the series without spoilers. I've already read this series as a whole. I've read it years ago, um, but we're, this read along is going to be a reread for me. So every time I reread the book, I'm going to be updating as I go basically for this vlog. So I finished my reread of the first book in the series and then book number 1.5. So I thought I would talk about them. So the first book in the series is A Night to Surrender. And this is a perfect book to set up this series. I'm one of the minority people, I guess, who loves this book. <laughs> I actually, when I first read this book a few years ago, I actually gave it four stars. And when I reread it a few days ago, I gave it five stars. I bumped up my rating. This is a romance between Susanna and Bram. So Susanna and her father ended up finding, founding, becoming the founders of Spindle Cove, um, which is a small town that a lot of spinsters and just women who don't feel comfortable in society come to vacation at or live at. Um, Susanna and her father created this town. Um, years ago, Susanna was not enthusiastic about entering society for the first time and her extended family thought that something was wrong with her and she faced some like medical trauma from that. They thought that these doctors would help her, be able to help her anxiety, but they did, they made it worse. Um, and so her father ends up bringing her to this town, to the state that he owns and creating this town called Spindle Cove. And she welcomes all women here in order to seek refuge and feel safe from society like she did. Her main goal is to just to help women. Um, she's also really involved with being like an apothecary because she wants to find other ways to help people medically besides like the way she was tortured as like leaks and bleedings and cuttings like she does not want anyone else to experience that so she's dedicated a lot of her time and research into finding other methods of helping people health wise so the hero on here his name's bram and he is a war veteran he was um put on leave a few months ago if not a year ago because he was shot in the leg um he almost had his leg amputated people wanted to amputate his leg but he ended up finding a surgeon after find after talking to many surgeons ended up finding one surgeon that told him that he could save it and so he walks now with a limp he has a lot of scar tissue around his leg it is painful for him to walk around with his injury um so i love the discussion here about chronic pain um, I deal with chronic pain myself. And so I loved reading about Graham's like inner monologue when it came to his chronic pain because I really just related to it. Graham in here really wants to go back to war. Like that is his life goal is to go back and be an officer. Um, but he has been discharged because of his injury and people don't think he could be an officer because of his injury now. And he walks with a limp now. He goes to Susanna's father who has a lot of sway with the um, British military um, and is like, hey, I need you to just help me get back to the war because this is like my life goal. And Susanna's father <laughs> tells him like, um, I'll put in a good word for you if you end up forming a militia in the town of Spindle Co. So there's a lot of hilarity that ensue because there are not a lot of men in this town. <laughs> And where there are men, they're a little kooky or old or too young. Um, so he has to put together this ragtag group of men to form this militia in order to prove that he is a good enough officer. Um, and so Susanna is there to like fight him tooth and nail because he's like meddling in her town that she built with her own two hands. He's interfering with all the plants that she has with all of her lady friends there. And oh, it is so good. Bram in here, their meeting is absolutely iconic to me. They meet when he's traveling to Spindle Cove to talk to her father, right? <laughs> One of the men he's traveling with is his cousin that he like holds the fortune of. Like his cousin doesn't get his fortune until he's like 25 or something or if he gets married. And so Bram is basically in charge of him until he turns 25. So his, his cousin gets into a lot of hijinks and he sets off this gunfire or gunfire with blanks to scare off some sheep that are in the way of them in their carriages or their carts or whatever and there starts this big sheep stampede in the main town of Spindle Cove 
and Bram ends up saving Susanna, knocking her out of the way so she doesn't get trampled by some sheep. Um, <laughs> and right then and there, he sees this angel and kisses her. <laughs> and she thinks that he hit his head, like, and is like trying to like soothe him and be like, are you okay, sir? Like you're talking kind of nonsense. Like I'm not an angel. Um, and he's like, nope you're gonna be mine. So this is definitely a hero falls first, like right at first sight for him. Um, I love their banter in here. It's absolutely iconic. There's also a really cute sheep in here that um, the hero names Dinner and oh, he's so funny. I love him. Um, this book also really sets up um, other books that we will get to in the series and couples that will eventually form. So I really enjoyed that. All the characters in here were fantastic. I love how funny this book is and how amazing this town is. I think this is just amazing and I don't understand why people don't like it because a lot of people don't like this book. I absolutely love it. This couple just fell in love so organically to me. So yeah, a really big win for the series for me. And then quickly, I do want to mention the novella in this series, one of the novellas in this series. This is book number 1.5, one Once Upon a Winter's Eve. We met Violet, I believe, in book one in the series and she is the heroine of this book. And her family is wanting her to come back to London to finally find a husband. But they're having like a ball a few days before she leaves. And the ball doors like to the, the ball area like are thrown open. And this guy who's like soaking wet is like trudging through looking very injured and falls at her feet. This mysterious man ends up speaking a language no one understands except for Violet. Violet has like a knack for languages. He may or may not be the love of her life that broke her heart a year ago. So yeah, this takes place during like Christmas time. I really enjoyed this one too. I'm gonna keep my four star rating for this one because I did enjoy it, but it's not necessarily my favorite thing ever. Um, the hero's reasonings for leaving all those years ago weren't necessarily my favorite thing ever. So four star rating for me. This is a fairly short novella, so I can't really talk about it all that much because I could spoil something. But I really love their dynamic in here and the lengths the hero was willing to go to win this woman back and to make her his. Um, so yeah. I really enjoyed this one, four stars for me. I can't really talk about anything else with this book because it could be a spoiler, but I do love like the hijinks that ensue after he collapses at the ball because Bram, the hero in this one, um, like ties him up and thinks he's like a bad guy or something because he's not speaking English. <laughs> and so uh, the hilarity that ensues after he's like tied up, it's funny to me, they're like running around Spindle Cove in the dark. I really, really, really did enjoy this one. Hi friends, I'm here to give another update on the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. We're going to be talking about the next two books that I had to read for the readathon. Excuse the dogs if you hear them walking around. I'm on dog duty right now. Um, so they're like talking to each other and moving around. So excuse them. <laughs> um, but the next two books that I read for the Spindle Cove series, Summer of Tessa Dare Along, is A Week to be Wicked and A Lady by Midnight. I don't own a physical copy of this one yet. I'm trying to amend that. I really want one in the step back. I don't think that's happening. This one doesn't have a step back, but that's okay too, because it's it's beautiful. And the dog is licking me. Hello. Oh, okay. I got the dog settled, but um, excuse the bone chewing, because that's the only way I can get my sister's dog to like chill out while I talk. So just gonna have to deal with it. Hopefully it's not too bothersome. Let's start with this one, shall we? This one's about Colin and Minerva. You got to meet both of these characters in the first book in the series. And this book makes me laugh every single time I read it. Like it is a hoot and a half. Both of these characters are iconic to me and their romance is like perfect for them as individuals and as a couple. So Minerva Highwood, you got to meet her in book one of this series. She is a archeologist, I think. I think it's archeologist. I don't know, she, yeah, I think that's right. She discovers fossils, right? And she loves, um, and she's a geologist too, because she loves to find rocks and stuff. She's not really taken too seriously by her mother. Her mother is another hoot and a half. <laughs> and um, she doesn't really think that Minerva's ever really gonna get married, so she's never put her mama marriage sights on her for men. But her mother really wants Diana, Minerva's sister, to marry Colin, who is a Viscount, but he um, hasn't been too responsible with his money. So he is like cut off until the age of 25, I think, or until he is married. So he either has to wait till he's 25 or he has to get married. Anyway, so Minerva in here does not want Colin to marry her sister. She does not. Main reason being she doesn't think that Colin deserves her. And so she like confronts him at the beginning of this book being like, please do not try and marry my sister. Like, 
no, no. And that's the first moment like Colin gets to see Minerva with her little like spark, you know? He, after that meeting, he's left like reeling like, hmm, there's more to this woman than I anticipated. <laughs> then the sparks, their banter filled relationship, it was already very banter filled, but even more so now. And Minerva asks Colin to help her on her journey to Edinburgh. She really wants to go to a geologist or archaeologist like symposium and she realizes she can't travel on her own so she's gonna ask Colin to help her. He very reluctantly agrees but there is a lot of things going on with their traveling because Colin does not like being in a carriage. He has some PTSD around being in a carriage. His parents ended up dying in a carriage accident and he was in the carriage with them as a child and so like he watched his parents die and so he does not travel in carriages at all anymore and then uh, he also has trouble falling asleep by himself he always needs someone to fall asleep next to so he pulls this bargain with Minerva like I will take you to the symposium if you sleep with me every night like actually like sleep with me every night because I cannot fall asleep on my own. This book does have its Spindle Cove qualities because some of the book does take place in Spindle Cove and you even have some scenes that go to Spindle Cove when Minerva and Colin are on their little road trip. Like you'll get little snippets of what's going on in Spindle Cove at the moment. It also has like a fake engagement situation because the two of them cannot travel like by themselves without causing suspicion, you know? So they have to pretend that they're engaged. And you also have like escaping armed robbers, putting on elaborate lies and schemes to get places. There's like this <laughs> fossil mold that they're carrying around throughout their entire journey named Francine. Like <laughs> Colin named this imprint of a foot Francine. Like <laughs> this is a really good, good Tessadier romance. I was cackling throughout most of this book. I'm going to be giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. That's what I gave it when I originally read it the first couple times that I reread it. Um, I also gave it that rating. Colin just unfortunately got under my skin too much where I wanted him to just like take this woman and screw everything else. So um, he got on my nerves a little bit and the dog is licking me. Hello. He, he Finn, I think I'm gonna leave it at that because these dogs <laughs> will not let me speak. <laughs> Right? So let's put this one down and talk about A Lady by Midnight. A Lady by Midnight is about Kate Taylor and Corporal Thorne. You know both of these characters in the previous books in the series. And Kate is known as the music teacher in Spindle Cove. She lives there um, now because she was an orphan and was at this lady school for many years and she decided to make her way now in Spindle Cove. You got to read about Corporal Thorne in the first book of the series, how he came to Spindle Cove with Bramwell and he's a part of the militia um, and that's how he came to Spindle Cove was to start a militia with Bram. These two are talking. Hi, can we? Can we not? In book one, A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare, in book one in this series, you got to read about um, Thorne having this like shocked expression when he first sees Kate. And so this expands upon that and why he did that. What was so shocking about him meeting Kate? Kate was an orphan growing up. She doesn't know where she comes from. And um, she also has this very distinctive birthmark on her face. It's like a heart shaped port wine um, birthmark on her forehead and she is desperate to figure out who her family is. She's always wanted that unconditional love that she's never really experienced outside of friendship. Things don't go the way Kate expects to when all of a sudden this ragtag family comes to Spindle Cove claiming that she is their long lost cousin. Thorne doesn't want these people to take advantage of Kate and so he pretends to be madly in love with her and that they're engaged. There is quite a lot when it comes to the hidden identity secret keeping aspect so I can't really talk about this book all that much because it's supposed to be very dramatic and you're supposed to be wondering what is going on throughout the whole book. Thorne is totally falling head first for Kate and Kate is doing the same for Thorne. She's becoming totally obsessed with him and she doesn't understand why because she really didn't like this man at first. She goes why am I falling for this guy I don't like. I really enjoyed this one as well. I loved just like this family that came in that wanted to welcome Kate with open arms. They're so like unique, a very unique family, especially in that time period. And I just really loved reading about them. And I hope that we get like books about them sometime in the future. I don't know, Tessa Dare hasn't written a book in quite a long time, especially in this series. So I kind of doubt that we'll get books about them, but I would really love to. I just found Kate's lineage 
to be like quite interesting to read about. Oh, here we come again. Here's the dog again. <laughs> Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. There's nothing else I can really like talk about except that I really loved how protective Thorn was. Oh, and this puppy, there's a puppy in here. Oh, I loved the puppy. Oh, I love this puppy too. And the fact that Thorn like got him specially trained to be like a, like a hunting dog of some sort. And uh, Kate was just like, this dog is mine now. <laughs> I thought it was really cute and really sweet. I have a dog with me right here who thinks I'm a popsicle. Hello, let's not lick. Anyway, <laughs> I really enjoyed this one as well. So um, I'm gonna give that one a 4.5 star rating as well. That did go up, I think like a point star, point five star from me. Um, so I gave both of these books for this round a 4.5 out of five stars. I just love this town and I love all the shenanigans that happens in there. Like I will always like be full on smiling when I read one of these books in the series. Like they're just so fun. Hi everyone, I thought I would tune in really fast because I recently finished Beauty and the Blacksmith. I haven't finished the other two books yet, um, but I'll pop in here really fast. This is book number 3.5 in the Spindle Cove series. And this is the romance between Diana and the blacksmith of Spindle Cove. His name is Mr. Dawes or Aaron. And I was telling my friends who are in the summer of Tessa Read Along that this book gives me a lot of vibes of um, like Cinderella 2. I think it's number two and number three whenever Anastasia and the baker like fall in love with each other gives me a lot of this book vibes <laughs> except uh Diana here is not mean like she is not mean she's not an evil stepsister at all she is like so sweet and so caring um but she has a very meddlesome mother who wants her to marry a titled man and so they have to like keep their relationship a secret Aaron and Diana have been like pining after each other for years that Diana has been staying in Spindle Cove she purposefully breaks her own jewelry so she can take it to his blacksmith shop to like get fixed. Like and he notices too, he goes, this is like the fifth time this clasp has broken in like a year. That's kind of suspicious, right? And she goes, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, she just thinks he's super cute and he's super attractive. And when the two of them finally confess their feelings for each other, all bets are off. They cannot keep their hands off of each other, but they have a very big problem, which is Diana's mother. I love Diana's mother. Um, like she is a hoot and a half throughout this whole entire series. Um, but like Diana doesn't know how to tell her mother, like she's gonna marry a blacksmith instead of a titled man like her mother's always wanted her to marry. So I really enjoyed this one. I gave it five stars. Like I love this one. I think it's so sweet and so cute. And there's nothing else I can really say. Like it's a short little read. Um, all the books in the series include the novellas have audiobooks by the way. And the audiobook for this one was great. And uh, five stars. I love this one. Hi everyone. We're at the last installment for this deep dive vlog. I have finally finished my reread of the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare, the last two books for this video. So I thought I would talk about them. So uh, you already watched my clip for Beauty and the Blacksmith. Next up is Any Duchess Will Do, which is the fourth main book in this series. This is the romance between Pauline and Griff. And I believe this one is my favorite book in the entire series. I love it so much. It's so good because so Pauline, you've met her in the other books in this series. She is basically a barmaid. She works at the bar slash tea shop that's in uh, Spindle Cove and Griff's mother at the beginning of this book. Uh, he's a duke, by the way. His mother ends up drugging him <laughs> and putting him in a carriage and bringing that carriage to Spinster, Spindle Cove in hopes to find a wife. He tell She tells Griff, pick any woman in this bar that we're in that's working right now as a tea shop pick any woman in this establishment and um i will make her into a duchess and that's when pauline walks into the room and she's like a mess she she's dressed with mud all over her dress she has like sugar all over her and her hair's a mess and he's like uh that woman is perfect <laughs> let's pick the barmaid um because he doesn't want a wife he does not want a duchess. He does not want to fall in love. He does not want a wife. He has his reasons. Um, but yeah, he basically pulls Pauline aside and is like, okay, so you're going to come to London with me and my mom. And if like you are the worst duchess ever, like if you make sure not to do well with all these duchess lessons my mother is going to give you, um, I'll give you a thousand pounds at the end of the week and you can go home and use it for whatever you want. She's like, uh, steal. I won't open a bookshop. Okay. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm not a good duchess. I'm a barmaid. I work and live on a farm. Like 
I will definitely not be your duchess for you for a thousand pounds, yes. Their banter together is absolutely iconic. I love Griffin Pauline so much. Their romance was so organic and the way that it flowed between the two of them, I love them so much. Things take a turn, obviously, between the two of them when uh, they start developing feelings for one another. Like, they're very attracted to each other right from the get-go. Um, Griff will not admit it because he doesn't want to feel those feelings. He has his own trauma and past. Um, I will tell you a trigger warning right now. It's a little bit of a spoiler um, for what happened to him in the past. So like skip until my hands are down if you don't want to know the trigger warning or whatever. Um, but there is trigger warning for previous loss of a child. So just like be aware of that. Okay, done with my trigger warning. I absolutely adore Pauline. Like uh, I love her so much and the love that she has for her sister too. And the strength that she has for living in a household that she lived in. She lives in a house with an abusive father who has hit her and belitt belittled her, her, that's a hard word for me to say, um, belittled her her entire life. Daniela, I love Daniela too. Daniela's her sister who um, we don't know what, like what she specifically has or what she's diagnosed with, um, but she basically has the mind of a child. And the way that Pauline is with her, like I love that sisterly bond so much. And she knew that she had to get back at the end of the week to go see her sister because like, her sister would feel so betrayed if Pauline didn't show up for her at the end of the week. So like, I love their relationship so much. And the way that Griff also treated her sister, like I love him so much. Like at the end of the book and even, and you get a glimpse of it in this one, like their relationship to me is, is so good also. It's very like brother sisterly. Like I love that. Like he fully adopts her as a sibling to him. Griff took a little while to like, get it into gear okay but like it didn't affect my rating whatsoever um i think i even bumped up my star my star rating from a four to a five this time around um i don't know why i rated it not a five last time because i love this book this book is iconic if you want great banter and just hilarity between two characters and you have two characters who are like determined not to fall in love with the other person and guess what happens they fall in love anyway <laughs> okay so the last book currently out in this series is Lord Dashwood Missed Out, which is book number 4.5 in the Spindle Cove series. This is a little novella. I think this is the shortest book in the series, if I'm not mistaken, but this is the romance between Nora and George or Lord Dashwood. Nora and Lord Dashwood, George, um, they were, I believe they lived on estates like next door to each other. And um, Lord Dashwood was best friends with Nora's older brother, but he passed away when she was a teenager. And they both kind of really haven't been the same since. Lord Dashwood really hurt Nora in the past and basically abandoned her um, when like she knew feelings were developing between the two of them and she has never like gotten over that really. Um, and so she decides to write this series of essays or pamphlets called Lord Ashwood Missed Out, detailing all of the things that this fictional fictional man missed out when she just when he decided to leave her so nora now is a very famous and popular amongst women of the ton or women in england in general because like they love these essays she's written and so at the beginning of this book nora has been basically hired or um is going to be doing like a tour a book tour not it's kind of like a book tour but in historical romance times she's gonna go to spindle cove to read part of her one of her essays um but the coach that she hired to take her to Spindle Cove like isn't there when she needs it to be and the guy who like owns the carriage building or whatever is like um we only have this one carriage available and like a guy's already in it but he said like other people can get in and if they want to like for a price obviously so she's like okay there's no other option I'll get in it so Nora does and she is distraught to realize that um it's it's George in the carriage who she hasn't seen in years and so the four two of them are in this forced proximity relationship in this carriage the carriage ends up breaking down at one point it starts snowing they have to go and find shelter in an abandoned cabin so it's like a one bed kind of trope too and that's all i want to say for this one because it is quite short and anything else i could say could be very spoilery but the two of them obviously have to confront the feelings that they had all those years ago and like why nora wrote these essays and how George is offended that she wrote these essays because everyone knows it's about him. Like Lord Ashwood and Lord Ashwood are very similar names. Kiki decided to join us. <laughs> um, I really did enjoy this book. 
It's not my favorite Tessa Dare. It's probably one of my least favorite Tessa Dares. Like I'm giving it four stars, like it's fine. It's the hero in here that bugs me because he does things and I'm just like, why did you do those things? Oh, why? But I loved Nora and I loved all of her writing and what she stood for, like I love her. But it was the hero in here that I just like couldn't get on board with, especially like what he did and what is revealed towards the end of the book. I'm just like, okay, dude, like <laughs> I would have just left you. I do want to mention too that the book, Do You Want to Start a Scandal by Tessa Dare is technically could also be labeled as the fifth book in the Spindle Cove series because you get to meet the heroine in that book in this series, but it's for this readathon specifically going to be a part of the Castles Ever After um, series because the hero is introduced in the Castles Ever After books. So like that's the only book that um, kind of links some of Tessa Dare's series together because normally we don't get that. So that's why I'm not talking about it in this video. And then um, a novella that I hope will be out soon. Like there's like an indefinite hold on this book right now. It says it's coming out January 1st of 2024. We'll see if that happens. But this is Love Letters from a Lord. And apparently this is about Miss Sally Bright who owns the um, like the all things shop where people go shopping for like groceries or other things in Spindle Cove. And then the only line for um, this summary on Gooders right now says, Sally Bright has a growing heap of love letters from a handsome Lord. Unfortunately, none of them are addressed to her. So I really hope we get that book soon. I've been waiting on this one for years. <laughs> like it's on my most anticipated reads of the year video that I post every year because like the book just keeps getting pushed back. And I hope the Tessa Dare comes out with this soon because um, I do love this series. And hopefully we get also like full length books um like more of those too like i love that anyways there you have it those are all of the books in the spindle cove series by tessa dare i had so much fun like vlogging my reactions to rereading these books i think they are great historical romances and i feel like great historical romances for beginners too if you really want to get into historical romances i feel like these are great books to pick up so let me know what you think about this series down below also let me know what your favorite book in this series is I think mine's Any Duchess Will Do. Like, I love that book so much. But upon reread, like, I think that book one is like a top contender. Like, I didn't think that until I reread it recently. Like, book one, I think, is so good. So, um, and probably number three would be Beauty and the Blacksmith. But yeah, let me know what your favorite or top three books are in the series. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the sun emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.